Welcome to episode one of the QCA Wrestle Podcast with Rob Hill and Jay Zyman. Our guest today is Moline High School head wrestling coach Jacob Rudiger. Coach Rudiger is part of a family with a super impressive wrestling lineage. He's doing a great job at Moline and we really enjoyed talking with him. To see more of our content, check out our website at QCAWrestle.com. Also, find us on Facebook and Twitter at QCA Wrestle. We are live. So, uh, Coach uh, Jacob Rudiger from uh, Moline High School, we really appreciate you joining us here tonight. No problem. Um, wanted to real quick talk through um, some of your background. So, um, you, uh, you wrestled, you grew up in um, Illinois, is that right? Yes. Okay. Pro- Providence Catholic, is that near Chicago? It's uh, Joliet, New Lenox, uh, about 35, 40 minutes away from Chicago. Okay, very cool, very cool. And uh, now your head coach at Moline, is it, did you just finish your third season? Is that what I? Third season as head coach, yeah. Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, <clears throat> wanted to ask real quick, Jay uh, has, has introduced you as Rudy. Um, yes. So it's sort of a famous nickname. Yeah, um, family nickname. Uh ever seen the movie Rudy uh it's my uncle Danny so uh if you haven't go out and see it it's a great movie great inspirational story so uh and go check it out if you haven't seen it Absolutely. so so Rudy uh there's actually uh kind of a twist in the story because your family is more notoriously known for their wrestling in Illinois versus uh the iconic football movie that came out is that correct yeah so um my dad has uh, seven brothers and sisters, um, and five of them, including him, were all head wrestling coaches in Illinois. So um, my dad coached uh, the two youngest at Providence Catholic as well. And um, Mark, being the first four-timer in Illinois, winning it in 81, uh, th- or 78 through 81, and uh, Bernie won it his sophomore year in 77 I want to say um so and all of them have brought home a team trophy uh coaching wise uh in the dual state series wow a lot, a lot of history going through there so so a good uh good uh tidbit for everyone it's just not about the football in your family in Notre Dame huh no not at all um the other tidbit, they all went to Providence Catholic except uh, Rudy, Danny. Uh, he was the oldest boy. The movie's got it as him as one of the youngest, but he was the oldest boy. Um, and the other ones all went to uh, Providence Catholic instead of Joliet Catholic. Yeah, never knew that. So uh, with the pandemic, uh, naturally, that's one of the reasons we're uh, all meeting uh, via a uh, different conference right now. Uh, what are you doing with uh, yourself? What are you doing with your wrestlers during this time frame to stay busy and uh, to keep moving forward with the program? Uh, it's crazy. It's the longest I've gone without seeing some of them. Um, we have uh, morning lifting all summer at 6 a.m. So I wake up and start my day with them pretty much all year long. And we gave them probably a week off in the summer uh for a couple of the holidays and stuff but this is definitely the longest i've gone without seeing them so it's i'm going a little stir crazy here uh, out of the normal uh and they can't even go around and scrap uh with people so a lot of them it's driving them nuts but we got to get through this what um wh- right now obviously it's pretty Good tough point. uh all the gyms all the gyms are closed the uh wrestling rooms are, are you know mostly closed I think uh what should a wrestler be doing right now I mean they, they got to get something in any any recommendations uh running uh push-ups body weight stuff um uh, helping around the house making sure they're staying up on their studies all those things uh preparing themselves mentally uh wrestling's a huge mental game too it's not all just taking care of the physical aspect it's uh getting your body right getting your mind right and you know, when that, uh, when this pandemic ends, you know, you've got to be ready to uh, continue to make gains and don't sit around doing nothing during this time. Make sure you're keeping your body active, keeping your mind active, watching old film, um, 
you know, Flow Wrestling still got stuff going on. Uh, other wrestling websites. Uh, don't miss this opportunity to get better. Good. Excellent. So uh, why don't we go back uh, to your beginning, uh, Rudy, on how you started getting into wrestling and, and what was your beginnings uh, with wrestling? And then how did you find yourself uh, over here in Moline and uh, coaching, coaching uh, the head coach program over here? Um, I started uh, wrestling at a young age. Uh, my dad was the head coach, so kind of always knew I was going to do it. Uh, started when I was four. Um, wrestled all the way through the Little Celtics into uh, Providence Catholic, um, their feeder program. And then, um, you know, had a love-hate relationship with it growing up. It wasn't my uh, first love. Uh, baseball was. Uh, coaching, definitely uh, prefer coaching wrestling over uh, baseball, though. So, um, definitely the relationships and stuff you get built uh, in wrestling far outweigh those in other sports, in my opinion. Um, and then came out to Moline my first year teaching eight years ago. Um, then went back home to the suburbs for two years, but uh, started a good relationship with uh, the current head coach at that time, uh, Todd Thompson. And when he decided to step down, he called me. And so when I came back out and uh, tried to get the head job that time, it was given to uh, Nathan Cross. And then waited, uh, waited in the wings and took it over uh, two years after that. That's great. great That's story. great. We're, we're, we're familiar, of course. A lot of us know Todd Thompson as well from uh, the Young Guns Wrestling Club. Um, yeah, great guy. Very cool. Um, wanted to ask, um, wh who were some of your uh, major role models in, in the wrestling uh, world? Uh, my dad's definitely one of them. Um, you know, taking the – starting the Providence Catholic uh, tradition as a powerhouse, won it in 78, 81, and then in double A in 88. Uh, my uncles are somebody I always look into. And then obviously you have uh, the current coaches out there, Kale Sanderson, the Brands Brothers, Dan Gable from back in the day, just watching what they did, how they built the program and trying to emulate some of those ideas and uh, build off of some of your own. And same thing with, I have a lot of family members who are still currently coaching and other coaches that are friends that just bounce ideas off of all the time and uh, use their guidance, like, hey, what are you guys doing with your program? How are you uh, improving the numbers? What are some things? And try to steal ideas and make it your own. Hey, hey Rudy, you, uh, you mentioned you've got uh, a bunch of uh, family members who are, who are still in the coaching ranks as well. Um, I wanted to pull up. Can you see? Uh, I got a picture sent to me the other day. Could you tell me a little bit about this? That is the Rudiger Cup. It started in, I think, 84. And uh, my Uncle Johnny actually won the first one uh, with Malaya Lions. Then my dad won the next couple uh, before moving to uh, Joliet West for a uh, two-year stint as the head there before going to Leiden. But, uh, yeah, it started in 1984. I think ESPN covered it in 87. Um, but just a, it used to be held two days before Christmas. So the whole family would come in town. Everybody was coming in. My grandparents would come in from Wisconsin, uh, where they retired from and, uh, all their teams would wrestle, uh, each other in the, uh, Rudiger cup. And as you can see in the picture, it's uh, quite a unique trophy in itself. It's, uh, old soup cans and, Coming from a family of 14, wouldn't have it any other way. That's very cool. I love that. Awesome tradition there. Uh, yeah, that, that's a unique trophy too. Uh, currently, who's, where's that sitting at? And uh, what is it going to take to get that back at home, Rudy? It is sitting in uh, Manuka, Illinois, at my Uncle Bernie's house. And unfortunately, he's retiring. So I don't, haven't heard exactly what we're doing uh, with the Rupert <laughs> Cup. Uh, but this was the first year we brought it back in, um, 
think 2009 was the first year since, uh, or it was the last year before this year. Um, and we brought in myself and my cousin, uh, Josh is a assistant at Link Away East. So we had three uncles coaching in it, uh, and then myself, another family member, and uh, my cousin Josh. So kind of taking the reins over to the nephews now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, we talked about uh, uh, the family history and dynamics on that. Who do you credit uh, a lot of your success as a wrestler and an athlete, and then your transition into the coaching role? Um, who helped make that transition? Because a lot of times you'll see great wrestlers that just can't make that transition into the coaching role. Um, how was that for you, and who was a couple of your people that you to credit your success to? No, uh, by by no means was I a great wrestler. I was all right, um, but definitely my dad uh, played a huge role in um, growing up as an athlete. Always provided uh, us with opportunities to go out and do what we loved. I spent most of my summer playing baseball. My brother did more of the wrestling in the summer, so we always had a uh, either my mom or dad with us, one of us uh, all summer, but we were always involved in stuff. And then I had great coaches growing up uh, from the Nowax, uh with the Little Celtics, the Reynolds family. Um, then going into high school, I had Coach Healy, uh, my baseball coach, Coach Smith. I mean, relationships and stuff that I had with uh, these coaches are, I could still pick up the phone and call them and they drop everything in a, heartbeat to help out and that's what I want to emulate in my coaching and stuff like that like hey it doesn't end when you end your career with me it's gonna be a lifelong thing I'm here for you if you need anything just call coach and here to help that's great that's an awesome relationship yeah I think yeah. it's uh it's in wrestling I've I've sort of seen it's more that's kind of the mentality a lot of coaches have more than any other sport. A lot of uh, coaches in other sports have that, but uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm rambling now, but yeah, I think I've seen it in wrestling a whole lot more. They, they're, they're really coaching you for life in a way. So that's very cool. Very cool. Yeah. I met my best friends for the sport uh, when we were both uh, four years old growing up. Uh, we started together and we ended our career together. Um, when we were seniors, but uh, I'm the godfather to uh, his uh, oldest daughter, best man in his wedding. Um, those type of relationships that, I don't know. I mean, I played football, I played baseball, I had close relationships with those guys, but the grind and stuff that you go through in wrestling, you definitely have that uh, connection with people um, that just, once once you've done it, it's, everybody else knows and telltale sign, just look at people's ears, you know, who not to mess with. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so with, um, obviously we already talked a little bit about it with the uh, current sort of isolation we've all got going on. We're all hoping it happens. It may not, but the freestyle and Greco season is, uh, is sort of upon us. Um, what what are I guess what are your philosophies on um, on Freco on on wrestling in the off season? Uh, the only way you get better at wrestling is continue to wrestle, and it definitely adds some um, awareness to folk style um, that you're not going to get in folk style, and it's just you can't get better at something if you're not doing it. So for those who aren't involved in other sports, that's exactly what we're preaching. Go do the off-season stuff. Do freestyle. Do Greco. You know, get better um, in your folk style game. Get better in freestyle. Go out and take on these opportunities. Go wrestle. Go compete. Um, that's one of the biggest issues with everything is people are afraid to compete. And when you go out and compete, go out and challenge yourself, you're going to get better. And you can't get better sitting on the couch. So I absolutely love freestyle and uh, Greco and uh, hope that we have all 35 kids that ended the season uh, doing them once we started back up. But 
right now we're on hold. We're waiting to see when everything's going to open back up. And I'm fingers crossed it's sooner rather than later. Hey, Rudy, earlier on in the conversation, you brought up something about visual, visualization and how that plays a big impact or part into the wrestling role. Uh, this is some, something fairly new to the sport. So I just wanted to kind of get your take on that. What do you have your wrestlers do? And uh, uh, how do you see that impacting, especially during a time like this while, while wrestling rooms are shut down? Um, if you're not visualizing yourself succeeding, you're not, you're not going to succeed. If you think you're going to go out and lose, you think you're going to go out and not do your best, then that's exactly what you're going to do. So you got to visualize yourself uh, being on top, um, going out and dominating the match and playing those things through your head. And if you're able to do that, that's a huge part of the mental game. Um, you know, visualizing that success, believing in you, believing in your training and just going out and uh, taking care of business. Um, you know, that's, that's all up here in the head where I got to visualize that success. I got to, visualize me getting that takedown um when i'm tired when i'm in overtime how am i going to get through this and that's where the visualization comes in yeah that's that's awesome i know uh recently i listened to a podcast seth gross was on and he was describing uh he's he's like i'm always wrestling he's like i'm walking around my house and i'm thinking about uh how i'm going to take down you know my next opponent and that sort of thing so a lot of uh, a lot of the high level guys, I think they, they it's just always with them. They're always thinking about the next move. So. Yeah, a lot of uh, sports psychologists have really gotten into that uh, a lot lately. Where they're talking about just all athletes visualizing um, certain situations and stuff. And I mean, I used to do it in baseball when I was uh, competing in that. Like, if the ball hits me, where where am I going to go with it? Same thing with guy shoots a high crotch. How am I going to defend this? Stuff like that. And um, it's a huge part of sports, huge part of life. I mean, you visualize certain things, you're already ready for them. You're not uh, caught off guard. Yep, yep. Um, what, uh, what do you look for in a team leader? Uh, all around. They are uh, good grades, good person, good character, hard worker, um, willing to do the little things to make everybody else better. Um, and, you know, I have some vocal ones. I have some uh, ones that lead by example. And the ones that lead by example are the ones that you idolize. Uh, got one of the greatest uh, leaders in the area, uh, Charlie Farmers 4.0. GPA, uh, two-time state place winner, is at every practice, um, doing everything he needs to get better. And I mean, you wish you have a hundred of those kids, but we only get a couple here and there. But he's he's a good one. Yeah, hey, uh, uh, you had mentioned about uh, uh, Charlie Farmer in, in uh, this uh, upcoming year. What is your team looking like? Uh, what are some obstacles you might have in your way? And uh, what are you, uh, the success? Because I know you have a lot of returning kids this year, so I'm interested to see where you see everything folding out this year. We had a – I thought we had a lot returning from last year's team too. So, uh, <laughs> kind of optimistic. We were very, very young this year. Um, we had four make it down state. All four of them are coming back. Um, and we have 13 starters coming back, so – uh, a lot of promise, it's, and it's hurting right now not being able to get in the room, uh, continue to make those gains in the weight room. But we were making a lot of strides toward the end of the season. I think in our regional lineup, we had seven freshmen in that lineup, and it's almost unheard of. So right. interesting to see the strides, uh, make sure they stick with it, um, come back out and realize, like, we had a tough schedule for a reason. Let's get ready, everybody ready for the postseason. And um, hopefully they come back out after taking some lumps this year. But uh, could be a pretty good team. Something definitely to uh, build on. It's going to be an exciting season. So, 
All right, Rudy, uh, we're getting near the end of uh, the interview right now. So uh, this is what we're going to call the rapid fire questions. It's kind of like your OT. So we're going to hit you from all sides on this on these questions. All right. All right. All right. Batman or Superman? Batman. Your Batman. Favorite, favorite wrestling match of all time? Ooh, uh, high school, I'm going to go with uh, Matt Kukla pinning Eric Tannenbaum in the state finals, making oh. Assembly Hall blow up. It was absolutely phenomenal. And he was uh, – he coached me. I coached with him. And uh, – we grew up and went through the same program, so that one definitely tops the cake. All right. You're in Illinois, guys, so let's go uh, blue and orange or black and gold? Black and gold for wrestling, for sure. All right. All right, nice. Uh, favorite wrestling movie? Um, there's some good ones out there. I'm going to go with American Wrestler. Oh, I forgot all about that one. Yeah, that is a nice one. Yeah. All right. Vanilla or chocolate ice cream? Vanilla. Vanilla. Yeah. What uh, what color is your toothbrush? Um, I believe the one I'm currently using is blue. <laughs> I got a couple. I got one upstairs, one downstairs. The one you alternate for the other day. Yeah. Okay. Keep them fresh. All right. So if you could be any type of animal, what would it be and why? This is gonna sound. Uh, a little weird now with that new uh, tiger show out there, but uh, it was always a tiger. Tigers uh, spelled in my last name. Um, animal I've always been fascinated with. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with tiger. Good one. We'll call you Rudy Exotic. That's right. Uh, <laughs> uh, mor morning person or night person? Um, I definitely used to be more of a night owl. It's definitely changed. I could still stay up. Um, and go but dogs have uh changed my life with that i'm up in and uh, then the morning lifting so definitely becoming a morning person um but still able to stay up i don't know We're running on fumes a lot of days <laughs> all right one thing that annoys you the most uh quitters ah. people who quit i can't stand it <laughs> what uh what's your favorite quote Oh, um, never quit. I'll go with that one. We'll throw it back to uh, Rudy on that one. All right. I like that. I like that. Uh, you know, and, and wrestling's definitely a, a sport that it's, it's a hard sport. No one's going to say if you do it right, it's not going to be an easy, easy sport. So um, I'll let uh, uh, Rob wrap this up here. And once again, Rudy, thank you for your time. Good luck to the Moline uh, team this year, and we look forward to hearing more from you guys. Thank you, and I appreciate everything you guys are doing. This is only going to grow the sport, and we need more stuff like this. So keep up the good work, and glad to be your guys' uh, guinea pig on this. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Rudy. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Please share this podcast with your friends. Give us a like and a follow on Facebook and Twitter at QCA Wrestle. And keep an eye out for more QCA Wrestling content coming soon.